cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin have been making headlines over the past few months. But do we know how they work? Here is a crash course explainer in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Whether or not you follow the stock market closely, you have probably heard about the recent surge and fall of cryptocurrency. Earlier this year, one Bitcoin's value topped $40,000 US for the first time ever. But a mere two weeks later, Bitcoin slipped by more than 20%. Soon there were stories of Bitcoin users who lost their passwords to their digital wallets, losing out on potentially millions of dollars. And here in Ontario, one court has been mulling over the idea of whether shares in Bitcoin should be considered in a divorce settlement. That volatility has brought up a lot of questions. How does Bitcoin work? Is it too late to get into the market? And for a lot of people, what in the heck is cryptocurrency? In 2009, Bitcoin, the first cryptocurrency, was born. Bitcoin is digital, meaning there's no physical coin you can touch or hold. But it is different from the digital money you spend shopping online. Bitcoin is what is known as a decentralized digital currency. That means there are no banks, government, or other intermediaries overseeing these transactions. If you go to your bank and um, you, you know, see the balance on your accounts, that's basically like a bank ledger. The bank knows how much money each person holds in their accounts. The problem with this is that the, you trust the bank to be accurate to maintain this and to be accountable. When you have something like a blockchain, now that trust is redistributed between multiple parties. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies run on blockchain technology. Think of blockchain as a database. Information is stored in blocks. This includes things like transfers and purchases. Once a block is full, it is linked to the previous block, creating a chain. All the blocks are connected chronologically, creating a chain that started in 2009 and continues to this day. Most of the time, it's completely auditable. It's fully open and transparent like Bitcoin. You can see the ledger. As long as you have an internet connection, you can download that distributed database and you can see every single thing that has happened on Bitcoin since day one. So why does Bitcoin have value? The simple answer is people give it that value. They trust it. Currency can take many forms, but the properties of what is known as sound money are universal. Divisibility, durability, recognizability, portability, and scarcity. When we talk about the divisibility of fiat currency like Canadian dollars, we know that one dollar can be broken into 100 cents. In comparison, a Satoshi is the smallest unit of a Bitcoin, equivalent to 100 millionth of a Bitcoin. Unlike Canadian dollars, which are printed through the Bank of Canada, there is a limit on how many Bitcoins are available in the market. Only 21 million Bitcoins will ever be produced. Now, there are two popular ways of acquiring Bitcoin. You can purchase them online or at one of the 11,000 Bitcoin ATMs across Canada. Or you can do what is known as mining. No, you won't be needing a helmet and chisel for this type of excavating, but rather a powerful computer. Mining was designed as an incentive for people to upkeep the Bitcoin network. The concept of mining isn't all that different from mining gold. As you help process transactions on the blockchain, you are rewarded with coins. Back in 2009, a miner was rewarded 50 Bitcoins for every block they produce. However, Bitcoin goes through what is known as a halving cycle. In other words, the amount of Bitcoin released into the world is cut in half every four years. This cut in supply can help explain the volatility of Bitcoin's value in the first months of 2021. Today, a miner is rewarded only 6.25 coins for every block they process. So when you think about it like that, Bitcoin actually goes through a pretty interesting cycle in the market where every four years, that supply gets cut in half and it obviously messes with the economics of it because now it becomes much more scarce. One of the biggest advantage of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin is that you can send large sums of money halfway across the world in a matter of 10 minutes. But what can you buy with it? While still limited, you can buy fast food, a hot cup of coffee, plane tickets to your next vacation, tickets to concerts and sporting events. More recently, Tesla announced it would start accepting Bitcoin as a payment method for its products after buying $1.5 billion US in Bitcoin. Bitcoin was created by Satoshi Nakamoto. The name is a pseudonym, and Bitcoin's partial anonymity is both an appeal and a concern. All kinds of information is captured on there, the date and time that the transaction occurred, whose address it was sent by, and to whose the address it was received. 
but there's only one piece of important information that's not held within there, and that who is the holder of the account. As cryptocurrencies have become more popular, so have the scams related to them. What they're asking for is for Bitcoin in lieu. And so um, one of the most popular ones that we're seeing here in Canada is the CRA scam, where a fraudster will contact somebody, usually via the telephone, and they'll basically scare them into sending payment to them um, unless or, or else suffer, you know, time in jail. According to Chain Analysis, criminal activity accounted for only 2.1% of all cryptocurrency transactions. However, that figure accounts for a whopping $21 billion US in transfers. While Bitcoin is the most popular of cryptocurrencies, there are over 8,000 different cryptocurrencies out there today. Just make sure that you do your research and that you develop an understanding of what cryptocurrency is, uh, the methods of acquiring it, and who those players are. Make sure that you're dealing with somebody who's, who's reputable. Although Bitcoin was originally conceived as something that would become a convenient currency, its role has evolved. It is sort of changed over time to become more of a store of value and hedging against stuff like inflation. This technology is not going anywhere. We expect it to be around forever. I mean, it's, it's actually kind of exciting um, to be a part of it and see it grow over time. It just becomes a good form of digital gold at the end of the day, more so than it is actually a day-to-day -day transaction currency. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.